The biggest motivator for me, both for DJing and for YouTube actually as well, is that I was told you can't do anything. I was told you can't make money doing it. I was told it's a stupid idea. And the people telling me this were actually my parents. Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm taking some questions from Instagram. So, I got my live stream pulled up on Instagram right now. Follow me at DJ Rick Webb. Maybe we'll make this a regular thing, who knows. But I'm going to be answering some of the more popular questions that I'm getting on this live stream Q&A off of my Instagram. So, let's get into it. DJ Reese Caleb09, how old were you when you started DJing? I was 15, 15 when I started DJing. PJ the real DJ, do you still work a full-time job and DJ? As of right now, yes I do. That may or may not be changing in 2020. Um, the main reason why I still work a full-time job is because I'm trying to maximize my income right now as I am young. So I actually have the availability. I have the time that I can spend doing a full-time job and also building a business. Um, I could 100% live off of the money I'm making off of my DJ side. Nonetheless, it works out better for me being full-time because if I'm full-time, um, I have that salary that basically covers all my personal expenses and then I can basically put 100% of what we make at Fusion Sound and Lighting back into the business to help grow the business. So that's why I am still full time, but that might be changing here in 2020. We'll see. Drew Swecker, he asked uh, best advice for someone who used to be a DJ but wants to get back into it. Really, if you want to get back into it, get back into it. You really just got to make the commitment though. That's the biggest thing for me. Um, if you want to get back into it, you got to commit and go for it. If you don't want to get back into it, then don't do it. But if you're going to get back into it, you got to commit full to it. You can't just do it partially. If you do want to do it partially, I recommend maybe like bars and clubs to kind of get your feet wet again and test it out. But if you want to do it full time, if you want to get back into it and actually DJ, go balls to the wall. James Dempsey 9 asks, what is the best beginner controller? What one would I recommend? Pioneer SB3. Pioneer SB3 is always my go-to recommendation for a beginner controller. It gets you into the Pioneer ecosystem, which is pretty much dominating the majority of the DJ market. And it has all the functionality of the bigger Pioneer controllers. So as you upgrade to say a Pioneer DDJ 1000 or Pioneer SZ or going stepping up to CDJs, it's the same sort of layout and controller setup as you progress through it. So Pioneer DDJ SP3. DJ Dylan, he asked me, how long have I been DJing? How long have I been DJing for? I started messing around with DJing at like just general like house parties, birthday parties, like 13 year old birthday parties and stuff like that when in 2010, it was December of 2010, those were like the first ever events I did. They were free, like home, household home speakers, nothing crazy. I started doing pretty much legit events for money, like I'm talking weddings, I started doing those in 2012. So it was like a two year period of like getting into the rhythm of being a DJ, the training and the practicing and stuff like that to the point where I actually started doing weddings. I still wasn't that great, I was still a beginner, but in 2012, that's when I started doing weddings and school dances and actually started doing um, sort of legit events as a DJ. So to answer your question, I've been a DJ for about 10 years. In December, it'll be 10 years. And I've actually been DJing legit events for eight years. Dylan 4P asked, uh, why did you start DJing? So for anyone that doesn't know, basically I kind of fell into DJing. So I've always been a person that kind of had playlist. I always categorized my music. I downloaded a lot of music when I was like in middle school and elementary. Um, and I just had a lot of music. I was always the person that had music. Um, I was in football. I was the only one that had clean music. So I was always playing the music at our weight room when we were lifting and all that. So that kind of stumbled into getting asked for like playlists for 13 year old birthday parties. And when we started turning um, 16, some of my buddies that were a couple years older than me that were on the football team asked for playlists because I had clean music. I had all the, the older music from my parents. I like ripped all my parents' CDs and had all the older music and stuff. Um, 
and I just kind of fell into starting to pick up this DJ thing and then I joined a catering company. That was very big for me because the catering company happened to be the biggest catering company for weddings in our area, like in the southeastern area of Ohio where I grew up. And in doing that, in doing catering, I saw a ton of weddings, which means I saw a ton of wedding DJs. And let me tell you, they were pretty much 90, uh, we'll go 80% of them were trash, absolutely garbage, ugly setups, couldn't mix or play any music that was relevant to the crowds they were DJing for other than like 70s music that was uh, no offense to any of those guys if you were watching this video, but seeing how bad majority of the DJs were I basically told myself I'm like I can do better than this and I pretty much set out on a mission to basically prove that I was good at this and I could do it better than the other guys out there. And lo and behold, eight years later, I am here today. Caleb09 asked me, what was your first DJ controller? It was a Hercules Force. And actually, if you go back to the very beginning of this YouTube channel, if you go back to my YouTube channel, the very beginning, I actually have the 200, I believe it was the 200 subscriber, uh, milestone I actually gave that controller away so um, if you go all the way back to the channel I gave away my original controller at 200 subscribers on this YouTube channel DJ Mackie D asked are there any secrets to obtaining a following on YouTube this the sad part it's actually a lot easier to gain a following quicker now than when it was when I first started For anyone that doesn't know I started on the YouTube DJ side back in 2015 I've been making YouTube videos since like 2010 I think uh, and like I always tried different genres and different niches and stuff like that and just like I was making trick shot videos if you go if you some, some of you guys might find it I'll let my Instagram chat know if you go on YouTube and you search for my name you might come across my old channel where I posted trick shot videos, I posted tech reviews, I posted all kinds of weird stuff, vlogs just in general. Actually, I think they're on this channel, the vlogs, right? Like the very beginning. But I was trying anything to try and gain a following and uh, the vlog spiraled into making kind of like product reviews and I noticed that there was a following. They were like getting like a couple hundred views and I was like, all right, well, let's just commit to this. And the biggest key to gaining following on YouTube is to be consistent to upload consistently, and I'm talking like literally once a week, like you need to at least be uploading once a week. If you go back to 2015, I have rarely an upload every single week. Maybe a handful of times in those five years, I've actually missed one upload, but always wanna upload at least once a week, and you wanna be consistent with your content. Stick to the same genre, the same niche. If I instantly switched my YouTube channel and started making like daily vlogs, the views and the subscribers would probably start to plummet because my following is based on DJs. So choose a following, be consistent with your content is the best keys to gaining a following on YouTube. Parker the DJ asked, uh, do you set aside a certain amount of money to buy new DJ gear? And the answer to that is both yes and no. So in general, obviously the goal is to make a profit. So I'm always making profit when it comes to my DJ company. And there's always new gear I kind of really want to buy. So the biggest thing for me is justifying buying the new gear. And a lot of times that comes down to, can I sell this and will I use it? And will it make my life easier? If it can answer any of those three questions, I may or may not buy it. But I always have a list going on my phone of all the gear that I think I might need to buy or want to buy for my DJ thing. So for example, right now I'm considering buying 24 new uplights, like an additional 24. I already got 12 wireless uplights. I want another 24 wireless uplights. The first thing is that costs a lot of money. The second thing is how can I justify buying that? And for me, that's how many events do I think I can sell uplighting in a single year and how quick am I going to make my money back? My return on investment, ROI. That's the biggest thing when it comes to a DJ business is your ROI because the goal again is to make a profit. And for me, I'm probably going to buy these uplights because I can... 100% of the time normally book out uplights for just about every single event I do. So we're gonna be turning our profit around very quickly on that and making our money back. So that's an add-on option. Stuff like speakers, that's just something over time. If I'm looking to upgrade speakers, I'm gonna be setting money aside waiting to buy those new speakers because it's gonna up the quality of my service and it's going to make my life easier because more than likely the speakers are gonna be 
uh, louder and be able to handle more people. So I'm gonna have to bring less speakers if that makes sense. When I bought the JBL SRX 815Ps, the main goal behind that was I didn't wanna have to bring four speakers to high school proms and high school homecomings. So I bought the JBL SRX 815Ps because they were as loud as four speakers. Made my life easier, was easy to transport, stuff like that. You really wanna be able to justify your purchases. And the biggest thing in my opinion on buying gear is to not buy gear with credit or with loans. You can do it in a pinch, but in reality, it's better off if you only buy new gear with money you have made from DJing. And that's something that I have done ever since I started back in 2010. Anything that I bought for DJing was bought with money that I made from DJing. I never, never took out a loan or put money on like one of those 0% uh, credits for six months or whatever. I don't do that. I straight up buy stuff with money that I already have made from DJ. I don't take out of my personal funds either. I've never taken out of my personal funds. All the gear that you guys have seen that I've bought and stuff has been from money that I've made from DJ. And that's just a really good concept um, at least in my eyes to implement as you grow. JP Min Mininch, Mininch, I, I, I'm probably gonna butcher your name, I am sorry. But what kept you going from starting in high school as a DJ and then continuing in the college? Uh, who were your role models? So on the second part of that, I really didn't have role models per se. I, I looked up to a couple of DJs in my area. Chris from DJ Associates, that's actually the company I started working for when I first started DJing. He was a great mentor. I wouldn't necessarily say I looked up to him as a role model other than I looked up to his business as a business model for what I wanted to do. It's actually very funny. I'm, I'm really negative motivated, if that makes sense. The biggest motivator for me, both for DJing and for YouTube actually as well, is that I was told you can't do anything. I was told you can't make money doing it. I was told it's a stupid idea. And the people telling me this were actually my parents. Now they've, they've since came full circle and understand that this was a great move and I basically proved them wrong, which was the whole point of what motivated me to keep going. So basically when I started in high school, I was always told, well, that's just a hobby. You can't make money doing that. Just focus on school and get yourself a real job, which I did. But at the same time, I did this whole DJing thing and started making a lot of money and proof that this is actually a full-time thing that you can do. Going forward is definitely something I'm going to be going full-time across the board with very soon here in the future. Like I said in an earlier question, the main reason why I still have a full-time job is because I'm trying to maximize the amount of money I have in my savings, the amount of money I have in my 401k so that I have money for retirement moving forward. And also if this DJ thing doesn't work out, I have money set aside to basically get myself, keep myself afloat until I get back into a real job again. Real job, DJing is a real job if you do it right. But there, there you go. Basically, my parents were a negative motivator. They told me I couldn't do it and I proved them wrong. Also, a lot of my friends told me DJing was stupid and you, you think you're fancy. Uh, yeah. Abra, Abra Mali asked, uh, what is the best moving head for the money? ADJ Inno Spot Pro. It's an old fixture, yes. Are there all these new ones from ADJ? The, the 3Z, the 4Z, the 5Z, I think they just put out the 6Z, you got the 2Z, you got the 2X, you got the 80, whatever, all these crazy new fixtures. Anyways, none of that matters. All these new lights, all they are are brighter and have way more like bells and whistles that no one needs. You don't need a moving head with 300 watts of power. You don't even need a moving head with 200. 90 to 100 watts of power is all you need in a moving head. And that is the ADJ InnoSpot Pro. It's got that, it's got the prisms, it, got, it has interchangeable gobos, it's got everything you need, and because the light is older, you can find them a lot cheaper. I personally own eight of them now. Literally, I own eight of them now because you can get them for really good deals. Like normally you can find them for about $500 a piece and it's a 90 watt moving head and it's, it's, a, it's a big moving head. It's a big moving head. With moving heads, if, it ha if it's bigger, it has more presence, um, it's got a wider face, like it's it's just, it's all you need. And I'm not alone, I know a lot of DJs out there that they own just a bunch of ADJ InnoSpot Pros 
and they don't buy all these new ones that are costing a thousand something dollars because you don't need them. That's one thing with lighting. Lighting, you really don't need the latest and greatest. You don't. James Dem Demzy Demzy07 asked, for a beginner, would you recommend DMX or sound active lighting? And this uh, kind of alludes to a bigger answer, and that is as a beginner DJ, you should not be worrying about lighting at all. Just literally don't worry about it. The biggest thing as a beginner DJ you need to worry about is one, building your skill set, becoming a better entertainer, becoming a better DJ, becoming a better MC. Two, get good quality audio really good quality audio. For any of you guys that don't know, I did not own a single pair of moving lights or DMX or really any good quality parts. I had a solid American Audio VMS 4.1 mixer as well as two JBL Purex 712s, two JBL Purex 715 XLF subs, two JBL Purex 818 XLF subs, and two JBL Eon 615s before I even bought my first pair of movers, DMX lighting, or anything. I was just rocking basic PAR lights, and I had two cheap wash lights, and they were all running sound active before I even considered buying any good quality lights or moving into DMX. Your top priority should be building your skill set, getting a good quality mixer, and getting good quality audio. That's all that really matters. You can DJ with no lighting. It, lighting is just an, an, an enhancement to your skill set. Audio comes first. DJ Diamond Lee asks, what question do you wish wedding couples would ask you that usually don't? I wish they would ask me if I actually mix. I'm gonna be honest, I, would, I, I, would, I, I wish more couples asked do you mix music and do you have videos of you mixing? Uh, that is by far the biggest thing that I wish they asked. Okay, I got 24 seconds left on this thing apparently. All right guys, that's all of the main questions I got on the live stream Q&A. You guys asked a buttload more questions than what I can really get around to in this video. Uh, I did take the time on the live stream to answer a lot of the smaller questions, the little questions like how old am I and stuff like that, the little basic ones. But those were the main questions that I thought were very insightful and things that would be great for this video. Again, if you guys want to, me to do more of these, please leave it down in the comment section down below and show a like on this video as well. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and follow me on Instagram so that you can be part of the next live stream Q&A that I do over there. Anyways, guys, I hope this video was very helpful for you guys. I hope I answered a lot of questions that maybe you guys were thinking about. And like always, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep them records spinning. And I'll see you guys next time. ShopDJLife.com. Peace.